Howdy, how's it going? My name's Davy Chappie, and today we're going to be talking about a new UA that gives options for the race that puts the D&D, the dragons. This article updates the Dragonborn by giving them new rules and splitting them into not two different races, but three, as well as updating kobolds and giving new feats and spells so that you can be the dragon you were born to be. As always, keep in mind that a lot of this is just my opinion, so if you prefer the original Dragonborn's bad breath weapon, then feel free to play your games however you want. But with that out of the way, let's begin. So the Dragonborn UA starts off by giving four new full races to choose from, one Kobold and three Dragonborn, the Chromatic, the Metallic, and the Gems. Each Dragonborn type gets a breath weapon associated with its color, as well as resistance to the chosen element. But unlike the OG Dragonborn, the shape of the breath weapon isn't connected to how their dragon ancestor breathes anymore. Instead of it being decided by color, now all Chromatic Dragons breathe in a line, and all Metallic and Gem Dragons breathe in a cone. Not sure if I like that change, although the damage was buffed from D6s to D8s, and now their breath limit is tied to their proficiency bonus, so it should finally finally feel more satisfying when you blow all your enemies. Also, in keeping to the theme from Tasha's, ability scores aren't tied to any specific stat, but it should be pointed out that now you can split that plus two into two plus ones so that you can give a minor buff to three stats if you so choose. I do like that change. As for the individual abilities, each race gets a special power at third level as an apology to Dragonborn players for the last six years. Chromatic Dragonborn come packaged with a ward against their associated damage type that they can activate to keep them immune for ten minutes. Against certain enemies, this could be devastating, so I'm tempted to lower this to one minute, but that's still ten rounds of a fight. Metallic Dragonborn get a second breath weapon that gives them the power of Thum, hurling people 20 feet and knocking them out on their ass, or giving them a concussion for a turn. Your choice. The Gem Dragonborn can harness the power of rocks to fly as a bonus action for one minute, and they also get the innate ability to speak telepathically with people right from level 1, so now nobody can escape learning about the healing powers of crystals. Also, for those of you not in the loop about Gem Dragons, this UA provides 5, and they all use completely different elements from the normal dragons. Amethyst uses Force, Crystal uses Radiant, Emerald uses Psychic, Sapphire uses Thunder, and Topaz uses Necrotic. As for the tiny little kobolds, they've been completely revamped, losing their pack tactics and sunlight sensitivity, but gaining Draconic Legacy, a trait that lets you pick one of the three buffs to remind people that kobolds are dragons too, damn it! These buffs give you advantage against fear, one sorcerer's spell that can be cast with any mental stat, or an unarmed tail strike. They can also unleash a Draconic Roar as a bonus action, startling enemies and giving advantage to you and your allies. It seems like this version of the Gutter Snipes aims to rebrand kobolds out of their original image as cowardly klutzes that fail upwards, and into the exact opposite image of brave Draconic descendants in a bite-sized package. Moving on to the feats, the Draconic UA gives three options based off of the three dragon types that aren't actually race-locked in case you want a character with Draconic blood, but it does mean that you can have a metallic dragonborn that was somehow descended from two star-crossed lover dragons who had to keep their illicit romance a secret, for society would never allow it. The gift of the chromatic dragon lets you imbue a weapon with one of five elements for a minute, and you can use your reaction to defend yourself against one instance of Draconic elemental damage. The gift of the metallic dragon gives you cure wounds and spectral dragon wings that you can use as a reaction to buff up the AC of you or an ally, and the gift of the gem dragon increases is one of your mental ability scores by one, and when someone within 10 feet of you hits you with an attack, you can mentally slug them back as a reaction to deal 2d8 force damage and knock them back 10 feet away from you. What's interesting about all these feats is that they each give an ability that activates off of your reaction, which isn't really something that most classes make use of too often, and they vary in range over how often they'll be used, so like a rogue who uses the reaction all the time can still take the chromatic gift since that won't be used very often, but a barbarian who doesn't care about their reaction other than for attacks of opportunity can take the metallic gift and become even more obnoxious. I do think that the gem feat is going to get old fast, since it's so reasonable that anybody could make good use of it, and it might lead to a reality in which the warriors of the Crystal Gems come rolling in and smacking everybody with their fat amethyst. Finally, we come to the spells, and while I won't break out the Davy Meter, I will break out the old format so that we can get through them quickly, and I'll go in order of spell level instead of the insanity that is going by name, starting with Icing Death's Frost. Fun fact, I had an Icing Death statue as a kid, is the most badass name ever. As for the spell, not only does it do damage, but it wastes their action unless they want to stay stuck, giving you the chance to walk over and say, it's ice to meet you. Nathair's Mischief. Basically a draconic wild magic spell, all but the molasses ball provide the same level of debilitation, so you have a 75% chance to be happy. Flamestride. Not to be confused with that other spell, you put on draconic slippers and act out your favorite Chinese legend, giving you zoomies and burning people left in your fire trail. For a third level spell, this is pretty hot. Raoul Thum's Psychic Lance. What it lacks in a pronounceable name, it makes up for it by having a really cool effect of ignoring cover so long as you know your target's name. Also, 10d6 damage at fourth level is big yikes. Summon Draconic Spirit. Summon Spyro to protect you. This spell lets you summon a stat block just like the Tasha summons, except this summon is also protecting you from its chosen element, and it's a large creature, so you can ride it. Fizzband's Platinum Shield. Judging by that name drop, we might be seeing a Dragonlance book soon. The amount of buffs that this spell provides are crazy, and it seems to be made specifically to fight dragons. That being said, it costs a 500 gold platinum-plated dragon scale to cast. And where do you even get one of those? I don't know, and I'm the DM. Draconic Transformation. Finally, you can be the bad dragon you've always wanted. And all it costs is an expensive dragon statuette, which if you've been to bad dragon, you already have. All of these powers look cool, but consider 
considering that two of them want you to stay within 30 feet of your enemies, one poor concentration roll will have your opponent ripping your helmet off, and then you're not a dragon anymore, you're just a creepy guy in a costume. But that'll about do it. I hope you enjoyed this video. This UA is pretty well balanced, so I didn't have much to complain about. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, ring the bell, and maybe support me on Patreon, because I will keep making bad dragon jokes until you do. But yeah, Davy out.